I'm Madeline Park. Today I'm chatting to Hannah Cole, fashion PR girl, writer and self-confessed bookworm. Hannah may have suffered from a small bout of quarantine fatigue, however she talks openly about how she's found comfort in her creative pursuits, even revisiting some childhood characters and using this sense of nostalgia to inform her lockdown style. I hope you can sit back, relax, and enjoy listening to Hannah's story. Um, all right, so Hannah, we'll jump into it, but um, we obviously know each other from my work as a stylist and you've been mm-hmm. the showroom at OMG5. Um, and I've always loved coming into your showroom because it's always so bright and lively and full of energy. Um, and <laughs> Uh, I I always really appreciate working with you because you're so down to earth and so easy to work with and in an industry that you know can be tough sometimes um, it's always awesome when you find great people um, so you <laughs> you've been there for about three years is that right yeah oh yeah it must be three years I lose track of it all the time but that sounds right to me yeah and how have you always wanted to work in the fashion industry? What's your kind of career breakdown? Yeah, I suppose growing up, I always really wanted to work in fashion and I had dreams of being a designer and going down that path. And then I think when it came to it in year 12, it was sort of tossing up whether I wanted to do a business kind of thing or a design. And I ended up going with business because I figured it'd be easier to get a job in the end. Um, And then from that, I fell into working at a media agency for a few years. Um, And then kind of, it was fun for the time. I met some really great people and I learned lots of great things. But eventually I decided that, you know, it wasn't really what I wanted to be doing for the rest of my life. So I kind of took a step back again and came into fashion again and started at OMG5 just by interning. And then... I was really lucky and the timing was really great um, and they needed to hire a new showroom manager. So I was able to get that role and I've been there ever since and it's been a great switch, definitely. Yeah. What drew you to, so obviously it's been in you your whole life. What kind of drew you there from the beginning, do you think? Mm, I mean, I've always loved magazines. I'm still a big print buyer I think sometimes I'm keeping it alive I I can't like I I will prints you know like where I grew up as a teenager in the 90s so print was all we really had from that perspective but I it will never die in me I still love the tactile kind of nature of it but um sorry totally it's not the same when you are reading it online or even looking at the images online it's such a different experience and I just love you know, the smell of the paper even. It's, it's something so special about it. But I've always been attracted to that. I think um, I'm not sure where it came from. My mum was always a big sewer and that kind of thing, so very creative. So I've always been attracted to that as well, making my trying to make my own things um, and drawing. And I was always just quite creative. I think I really liked the idea of expressing things via clothing or being someone else via clothing like dressing up was always such a big thing when I was younger and creating characters so maybe I kind of try to do that in my everyday life as well yeah um and what kind of going back to magazines what were your favorite titles growing up I think I mean I was a big Frankie fan for a long time that suits um, yeah. <laughs> I loved all the other things in it as well but um I think particularly like Rush and Oyster and of course I loved um Vogue uh what else did I buy back in the day I just I would lap up anything I could get my hands on if you caught me in a doctor's surgery I would be rifling through the magazines to find one that I hadn't read yet so yeah. anything I could see I would read it um and are you, you're also writing now you're a fashion writer um I know that you're doing a lot of work with fashion journal 
Uh, are you writing for anyone else or is it predominantly them? It is mostly fashion journal. I'm also kind of, I mean, because I'm working, it is difficult to kind of manage all of that time. So I'm exploring other options at the moment and, you know, putting the feelers out. I've also um, worked with Talissa on her Badlands journal before as well, just doing a couple of things here and there. So it's something that I am keeping on the side and it's really nice kind of release for me. I find it really therapeutic and it's so interesting and I really enjoy exploring you know, new topics and things that fascinate me. And I hope that they fascinate other people as well. And yeah, seeing where that goes as well. You've managed to put like um, a really nice spin on things that I think uh, other people, you know, are are interested in, but it's, it's unique. It's not stuff that you're necessarily going to read everywhere else. So I am confession is uh, you did an article about, um curated vintage stores uh and i've got one now as part of the podcast but i will never take my passion away from what other people are doing and um i fell in love with one of the stores that you mentioned so good on you for which doing. one are you in love uh, with now uh, it was oh you, you put two on instagram it was one of the ones that has an etsy store and they do these beautiful oh. they, they um like you know knits with the rosette embroidery and yeah. I, Back here, I think yeah. that's the one. Uh, yeah, I know her imagery is beautiful, and everything she does, the way that she fixes things herself, and she'll even she's been doing a lot of darning recently on jumpers and things, yeah. and I just I want to do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. So, um, what if you, are you doing a lot of writing, like as a means, like as you said, it, it's a creative outlet and it's a bit cathartic for you, given where we're at with life at the moment. Are you doing a lot of writing, and and what kind of things are you writing about in this kind of very weird, crazy time? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I think that with everyone else, like I think we've all been experienced a little bit of fatigue and just general. I I don't know, like, even if you're not directly affected by the circumstances at the moment, you still feel exhausted or stressed in some way, even if nothing particularly bad has actually happened to you. And so I think I've seen the effects of that in that maybe I'm not writing as much as I normally would. And my ideas that I've got are not as, I guess, exciting it's all you know everyone's writing about writing about coronavirus at the moment that's what you're seeing everywhere and I don't really want to be doing that because I don't feel like I've got that much to add to the conversation other than my personal experience or where I'm finding comfort in at the moment so I'm definitely doing less but I'm trying to use my time now and make sure that I'm looking after myself so that I feel able to write more um and in terms of things that I am writing about I think I just want to dig a bit deeper into the emotional side of things like I've been finding a lot of comfort in not even just fashion but in cooking and I think it's I really enjoy seeing how all these things intertwine I suppose so I don't only stick to fashion stories necessarily I also really enjoy writing about you know, natural beauty or food, you know, maybe one day, I don't know. And, you know, and they're all interrelate, I think. I think our interests are all quite broad. And so, you know, we can find all these touch points that are across the board. Uh, so you're in isolation at some level. What's your home life like? Are you with family or are you uh, with friends? What's your situation? I'm in a very, it, it kind of happened at quite a bizarre time for me. I think it's probably the most fortunate situation I could be in. Uh, at the moment, I'm living in a little granny flat, tiny house in my parents' backyard with my partner. And we also got a dog at the beginning of the year. So that's kind of been a nice little, it makes being at home a bit easier, having a dog around someone to cuddle always and to go on walks with all the time so yeah I mean it's 
I've got a backyard. I've got access to sunlight. Like I feel very lucky to be in this position and not stuck in a, a, a small apartment somewhere where I don't have people around me and I don't have the outdoors because that's something that really boosts my mood all the time. Are you in Sydney or are you like... Yeah, like in Sydney, in the back in the burbs. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice to have some space. And as you said, it's nice to be able to get outside. Um, I, I try and get the kids out once a day and I feel like just being able to do that keeps just, it's that level setting point, isn't it? Um, just keeps, keeps the sanity going. Exactly. So, Without the sun, I don't know what we would do. And what kind of dog do you have? She's a greyhound, a rescue one. Oh, a rescue, so, my friend, a, a rescue greyhound. They just love him. <laughs> yeah, she's so beautiful and she just sleeps half the time. So she loves they, life. They're pretty lazy, aren't they? Yeah. Incredibly. It's but insane. They, they take up so much space. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we live in such a tiny place. She yeah. takes up so much room. She, the couch is hers now. Like, yeah. we're lucky if we sit on the couch. <laughs> Uh, back to what you're doing. I, I know from Instagram, you're a bit of a bookworm. Is that, is that fair to say? Correct. Yes. <laughs> Are you doing a lot of reading at the moment? I, I've been doing probably not as much as I wanted to. Initially, when this whole thing started, I was like, I'm finally going to get through all of the books I have next to my bed, which is a crazy amount of books. That I don't know if I'll ever get through, but I was like, this is the perfect opportunity for me to just read, take some time out. Um, but it hasn't really gone that way. I think I found the first few weeks of everything happening, I was just exhausted all the time. Just like, I think it's an, an emotionally drained thing. So I couldn't read. Um, but since then, I've been picking up a few like easier books. I just started Bridget Jones's Diary because I figured that that would be a nice, light and fun read. And I finished Little Fires Everywhere, right. um, which Reese Witherspoon's been doing the TV show for. So I'm hoping that comes to our screen soon as well. I didn't yeah. want to get any like little hints at what was happening in the book until I'd finished it. Yeah. And so you've enjoyed it? But I did enjoy it. It was a nice, easy read, you know, and, characters uh, you love and hate. Yeah, what characters did you love in it? Like, can you give me just like a description of one of the characters you loved? I think I, who was I attracted to the most? I think one of the children of Reese Witherspoon's character, I think it is, she's kind of, the dark and moody teenager who always is disagreeing with her mom and causes havoc in the family. But I think it's really interesting when you kind of uncover the layers in those relationships and you kind of see why she's the way she is and why the relationship with her mother is so conflicted. Um, I, yeah, I like characters who have a bit of depth to them who aren't all perfect and aren't all bad, but you know, you kind of, feel like you grow with them while you're reading can you were you a dark and moody teenager I mean I'm a Scorpio so <laughs> yes I was definitely a little bit too moody at times yeah. I'm getting better at it <laughs> yeah how's it going being in the same household oh, I was worried about that I was like am I just gonna revert back to teenagehood I hope not but there's enough separation that we're okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I also noticed, and I feel like I almost got dressed for the occasion, but um, that you've been rereading Little Women or reading Little Women. Yes, did I did read that. And I read it as a child. And I, my memory is that I really had loved it. And then I watched the movie earlier this year, thought it was great, loved the costumes in it in particular. Um, and then it came to reading it again. and. I didn't, I just found it difficult because it's so long. It's so old and it's so sweet that yeah. it almost feel, felt a bit sickly. Like I like a little bit of grit. So I was like, this is almost a bit too perfect for me, but I made it through. I finished it. I had to finish what I started and I'm glad I did. 
Yeah. And I think it's the perfect book for, you know, young girls who are wanting to find their way. And Jo is obviously a really cool character because she's the writer and she has these big dreams. And that was interesting and inspiring. Yeah, I, I'm a bit rusty. I, it would be a nice one to revisit because I did love it as, um, as a kid. And I actually had, my mum had the book and I had read her book, you know, her actual version was a bit, you know. It, uh, it makes it so much better when there's a little bit of personality or oldness injected into it. So, uh, but Jo was the rebellious one, wasn't she? Yeah, she was the one who wouldn't marry, you know, she didn't want a partner, would just write and be a, you know, famous author or something. So am I sensing a little bit of a theme here in terms of your identification with characters? I know, it's <laughs> weird. And I also just want to dress like her now as well. Yeah. Because I loved the outfits in the movie, they were amazing. Yeah, what kind of things do you want to wear? I just want to wear big shirts and big collars. Even they, they had those, these, I know exactly, very what I want to be wearing. They even had these um, like scarves or shawls that they belted to themselves in the movie. And I, I love to that. take a few photos of that. Yeah. Um, how do you describe your style now? I think it's, I'd say my typical way I dress, I try to inject a little bit of vintage or secondhand into everything I wear, whether it's like a coat that I've picked up at some point or I've got a billion button up shirts that I've bought from different binnies all over the place. Um, I've been, th I've recently, I think I've been for some reason kind of going back to like a schoolgirl sort of look in an in a way where I'm like wearing big blouses like a skirt maybe a tartan little skirt socks Please. and like loafers or sneakers or something like and I don't know whether that's because now that life is so complicated and confusing I'm trying to revert back to like these nostalgic days when I didn't have to think about life so in the podcast, I've been talking a lot in this style at home series about the people's working from home looks, but I, um, uh, I've enjoyed doing that, but I, I, my, my desire is to kind of drill a bit deeper and kind of get a bit more inside, like, you know, the, the emotional kind of component to it. And I feel like one of the things that people are now doing as an almost nourishing thing to themselves is, is um is kind of doing a clean out whether it's their wardrobe or their businesses and I'm wondering are you kind of going through any similar process I haven't started my process but it's been something I've been thinking about since the beginning I think um I think that not having as many people around you it gives you the opportunity to try on the things that you've had sitting in your wardrobe for so long and you just don't know what to do with them like when you, if you're getting ready for work in the morning, you, you want an easy outfit that you know you're going to feel comfortable and happy with all day. So very rarely would I risk, you know, trying on this dress that I've had sitting there and just waiting for me to style in some way. So I think that this is the perfect time to kind of delve into those musty corners and pull out things and see if you can wear them, if you actually like them or not, and then deal with them as you need to. So I've got so many old things hanging in my cupboards that I just have built this connection to, but I don't wear anymore. So my plan is to try them on, give it another go. And I just have to start saying goodbye to some things that I've accumulated. <laughs> and in that process, I mean, one of the things that we also probably are doing is really appreciating what we do have. Um, is there anything that particularly that you're really treasuring or holding on to as, as, you know, just something that you really value for yourself at the moment? I think I, I'm, I have a bit of a blazer and jacket collection, which I have from many vintage stores and also from my mom when, you know, so a lot of them are from like the eighties or the nineties. They're the things that, 
I love an oversized blazer that I can just chuck on anything and they just make me feel so comfortable and powerful at the same time. They're the things that I'm really holding on to because I know that I'll keep them forever and I just cherish them. They're so easy for, to go with anything that I'm wearing. Yeah. And so you're saying that they make you feel powerful. Is there any other reason why that you, they might stand as a symbol of you or your style that makes it special for you? I think it's kind of become synonymous with how I dress. Everyone I know is now like, Hannah has a really great little blazer collection. <laughs> It's like a little formula I've got, I suppose. You know, you have your bottoms and your top and then pop on a blazer and you're good to go. Um, I think that because I've also got quite a few different textures and colours and even some patterned ones, that they're kind of there to suit my mood. Like if I'm feeling a little bit grungy, maybe I'll pop on the leather black kind of blazer. If I'm feeling a little bit more colourful and gent adventurous there's a little checked blue and green number so I just I work them to probably fit my personality as well yeah okay and in terms of the kind of cleansing de decluttering process is that happening at some level for work like at OMG5 for you or is that mm. I think not so much. I, I mean, it's a great time for us to clean and get everything organized. It's a really good reset to do a lot of admin um, and things that have just been on the list of things to do for a while. Um, but it will be really interesting to see when we get, you know, new collections coming in when they do come in, because obviously there are some delays with production and things like that at the moment, which are Going, affecting. Like, how are all your designers coping? Are they, are they, are they coping or, or are they struggling? Are they able to, to keep going? I think it's been pretty scary for most of them. And initially, like when a lot of the factories were having problems, like it was hard for even just sampling and things, but I think on the whole, a prime, mostly because we're working with local designers. Um, so most of them are working in Australia or New Zealand, not necessarily manufacturing there, but are based there. Um, you know, the effects have been felt a little bit less than say if we were working with big international brands who are, you know, like in Italy, what's happening over there. So it's still a scary time and it's uncertain, but I think that the whole Australian fashion industry has had a really positive response to this. Um, and it's shown how the, you know, Australian consumers, we love our local labels and we want to get behind them and make sure that everyone comes out of this together. Yeah, absolutely. And you've got some great local labels like Chalice Cooper and Kate Sylvester. Um, and, you know, it, part of the reason why your showroom kind of lights up is because of like the tool and the polka dots and the, the <laughs> colors and the sparkles. Um, so have you got a coming out outfit that you, you, you've, you've eyed off that as your kind of way to come out after isolation? That is actually a really great question. I have not even thought about this, but I am definitely Look, there's so many, particularly Anna Kwan, she's got this beautiful, like, lilac backless dress at the moment. That is so beautiful and it looks amazing on. But where, where would I wear such a thing at this time? I mean, I could. I could definitely wear it at home if I really wanted to. But that would be an amazing entrance back into the real world when we can. <laughs> Uh, well, Hannah, I, as I said, you've always been so lovely and down to earth um, and easy to work with. And uh, the interview has been exactly the same. So thank you so <laughs> much. 
Um, and I look forward to actually seeing you in person soon. I know. Thank you so much for having me. It was really great to see your face at least. Oh, I know. It just, it makes it feel just a little bit more real, doesn't it? Like Exactly. On a daily basis, Hannah is surrounded by beautiful things and it'd be easy to get lost in the perfectly manicured world that comes with working in fashion PR. But Hannah's an old soul and to her own admission, likes a little grit. She's also a girl of my own heart who values things with depth and a story and injects this sense of nostalgia into all her creative pursuits. Whether it be her beloved book characters, what she writes and how she writes it, or her curated vintage wardrobe. I hope you've enjoyed listening to Hannah's story. And for more style stories, please visit my website, madelinepark.com.